Welcome to our lecture online. Our next method is a very important method. It's called the completion of the square method or completing the square method. But we're going to start with a special case where the coefficient in front of the x squared term is equal to 1. So our general quadratic equation, which looks like ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, is going to change a little bit. Since we're going to let a equals 1, it's going to look like this. x squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And then we have a specific method of how we can solve for that equation by using what we call completing the square method. So there's five steps we go through. The first step is take the constant term and move it to the right side of the equation. The second uh, step is taking half the numerical coefficient of the middle term, squaring it and adding it to both sides. So we take b divided by 2. We square it and we add it to the left side and b over 2 we square it and we add it to the right side. Then next we realize that now on the left side we have something we can write as the square of a single binomial. That's what we call the completion of the square method. So this can be factored as x plus b over 2 quantity squared. We still have on the right side minus c plus b over 2 quantity squared. Then we take the square root of both sides, so we take the square root of the left side, we end up with x plus b over 2, and we take the square root of the right side, but remember we need to have both the positive and the negative square root of the right side as the two possible answers. Then we move the b over 2 portion to the right side, so we have x equals negative b over 2 plus or minus the square root of minus c plus b over 2 quantity squared. And then if we want to rewrite a little bit, if we want to factor out a 2, we can take it and make it look like this. Now you begin to see that this is very close to something we're used to seeing. But there's something missing. A is missing. So if A was part of this equation here, we would have what we call the quadratic formula with A not being equal to 1. But since we use a special case where A is equal to 1, A will be missing in this final format. So you can see that there's a way of getting the quadratic formula using the completing of the square method. But here all we need to do is use that very same method on a particular problem or, or any example problem. So let's use this as an example. Note that the coefficient of the x squared term is equal to 1. So the first step is to take the constant term and move it to the right side. So we're going to do that. x squared plus 12x equals negative 35. So that's step number 1. We're going to keep track of the steps. Step number two, we're going to take half the coefficient of the middle term, square it, and add it to both sides. So that's step number two. So we get x squared plus 12x. Half of 12 is 6, and we're going to square that and add it to both sides. So 6 squared equals minus 35 plus 6 squared. So notice we took half the middle term, which is 6, square it, and add it to both sides. Next. We now realize, well, let's rewrite this first of all. We can write this as x squared plus 12x plus 36 is equal to minus 35 plus 36, which is equal to 1. Now notice we can factor the left side because it's a perfect square. So this can be written as x plus 6 quantity squared is equal to 1. And so that's step number 3. Notice step number 3, we're going to factor the left side. Step number four is we're going to take the square root of both sides. So step number four, we take the square root of the left side, we get x plus 6, which is equal to plus or minus the square root of the right side. Of course, the square root of 1 is equal to 1. And so we can write it like that. We can say that x plus 6 equals plus or minus 1. Now the next step is we're going to move the 6 to the right side. So step number five, we have x is equal to uh, negative 6, because a positive 6 becomes a negative 6, plus or minus 1. So here we have the two possible solutions for x. So either x is equal to minus 6 plus 1, which is minus 5, or x equals negative 6 minus 1, that means x equals negative 7. So here are the two possible solutions. And notice if we plug those in the original equation, they should come out all right. Let's try that. Let's do a quick check to make sure we have the right solutions. So first of all, x equals negative 5. If we plug that in, we get negative 5 quantity squared plus 12 times negative 5 
plus 35, what is that equal to question mark? So that's 25 plus 35, that's, uh, that would be 60. Minus 60 is zero, so that does check. And the next one, x equals minus seven. So I have minus seven quantity squared plus 12 times minus seven uh, plus 35. What is that equal to? Question mark. That should be a 35. Let me rewrite that. 35, there we go. So it gives us a 49 minus 84 plus 35. 35 plus uh, 49, that's 84. So this is also zero. And notice both of them check out. Those are indeed the two correct answers, the two correct solutions for x in that quadratic equation. And we found them by using what we call the completing the square method. And that is how it's done.